Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In fall 2020, I took Chem 102 with Eric Shelter, and today I'm gonna give a review of the course. As usual, I'm gonna talk about the course structure, I'm gonna talk about the difficulty, I'm gonna talk about the quality of the course, and then I'm gonna give some tips to succeed in the course. Without further ado, I'm gonna get right into the video. So Chem 102 is second level introductory chemistry at Penn. This is a pre-med requirement and it also fulfills sector six, which is physical world. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this class has a prerequisite of Math 104, which is intro calculus. Personally, I don't think that this prerequisite is really necessary because we only really use calculus one time in the course. The only real time that we use calculus in this class is for the integrated rate law, which is, which is at the end of the course. The only real line of calculus that we do in this course is what I'm highlighting right now. Basically, all the calculus that we do ends up into these integrated rate laws but they're all given to us and they're tabulated. So if you don't understand what's going on, you still get the gist of it and you, you still can get through the course basically. There's no question that was on a quiz or an exam where it asked us to show the integrated rate laws. So if you haven't taken Math 104, but you still know what an integral is, you should be able to take this course. But moving on, I'm gonna talk about the course structure. So Chem 102 is made up of electric component and an ungraded recitation. There is no lab portion of this class, but there is a lab that's associated with it called Chem 54. A lot of students take it at the same time, but you don't have to take this lab at the same time as Chem 102. I actually took Chem 53 this semester, and I plan on taking Chem 54 at a later time, but yeah. So on a weekly basis, we had recorded lectures that we had to watch in a folder on Canvas. Almost every week we had homework through Cengage also that we had to do. And along with all of this, we had recitations every week. They were ungraded and TAs usually had some type of slideshow just to go over the content of the week. And they would usually give us like a few questions in the back of the book to do and practice. And they just kind of go over the answers with us at the end. And then after all of this, every about two weeks, we had quizzes. The quizzes were usually five questions and they were real exam questions, so they were almost exactly like the exam questions. So moving on to the content, the content of this course was split into three different sections with their own corresponding exams. So the first part of the course was focused on thermodynamics, so we talked a lot about heat, work, entropy, things like enthalpy and free energy, things like that. And then the second part of the course was focused on equilibrium, so we focused a lot on equilibrium position and constants. We learned about acids and bases, and we learned about buffer systems. And then the third part of the course focused on chemical kinetics and electrochemistry. So we learned a lot about things like reaction rates and rate laws, and we learned about electrochemical cells, stuff like that. So the special thing about this class and the content of the class is that they're really linked to each other, but they're not exactly based on one another. So a course that I reviewed recently was BBB 109, and in that review I talked a lot about how the first part of the course is the basis for the second and the second for the third. So I've drawn out like kind of what I'm talking about. This course is a little bit different in the fact that you can really learn each part separately, but there are linkages between them. So BBB 109, I have them all like kind of stacked upon each other because each part of the course is the basis for the next part. But Kim 102, they're really kind of separate pieces, but they all link together in some type of way. And especially since we just took the final like a week ago, I understand the linkages now and I see like, wow, when we were learning this in the first part, it's actually also connected to this and this and this and this. So you'll see the linkages as you go through the course, but it's not necessarily a class that's based on, on top of the part before. So yeah. So to talk about the grading of this course, this course is graded just like Chem 101. There's a point system with the max amount of points being 450. The homework is 50 and all of the exams and the quizzes are 100. And whichever your lowest exam is, or if your quiz grades are the lowest, that will be the part of the course that's dropped. So you'll have 450 points overall. So I'm gonna move on and start talking about the difficulty of the course. So for me, this class was difficult, but it got better as the class went on. For the first part of the course, I really wasn't understanding things very well. I was just having issues getting it through my head and I was doing the exercises in the back of the book, the homework, going to recitation, and for some reason, some of the, some of the content I just wasn't understanding. So I actually met with a STEM learning specialist at Wine Garden, and he's a Penn alumni, and he actually took this course in his undergrad. 
and he told me that it is a difficult course and you know the content can be kind of confusing to understand but his thing was he told me to make sure to make mind maps for this course and really understand not only what we're taught but also the processes that are going on around it so that's what i started to do i kind of did a little bit of research on how to make good mind maps and you can find plenty of articles and videos on how to make mind maps but that's what helped me a lot with the difficulty of this class and it really improved my performance a lot to the point that the final exam i got 100 on like i really understood everything and all the linkages that go together in this course so yeah so i guess to give more commentary on how hard this class is it's not like a hard class that's like unanimously hard and i can just say that it's a hard class but i can say that depending on how well you pick up topics like this is how hard the class is going to be so it's really going to be a person person basis i'm not going to say that's an easy class and i'm not going to say it's a hard class because everyone had pretty different situations and opinions of this class so but now i'm going to talk more about the quality of the course so obviously the quality of a course depends a lot on what professor you have and it's definitely going to vary for each professor but I had Eric Shelter for my semester, so I'm gonna talk about that. So overall, this wasn't the most quality course that I've taken before, but it wasn't horrible. Eric Shelter is a really nice professor, and he's a professor that really takes into account what students feel. So there were a lot of times in the class where people would say that they were feeling overwhelmed with other classes and quiz dates coming on the same day and exam dates. So there were a lot of times where he would change dates and change due dates for us to make us feel a little bit more comfortable, which was very nice. But at the same time, the course felt kind of like poorly planned, sometimes poorly executed. Um, I guess some examples would be like our lecture schedule. It's supposedly supposed to be three hours a week, but a lot of times we would end up watching like four and a half, four hours of lecture, which isn't a big deal, but it's just something that wasn't really executed very well. There were also times like when we had assessments, I remember specifically two of our exams, there was one exam where images weren't being properly uploaded and students couldn't see the images. And there was one time where there was actually like a value that we needed to answer a question that wasn't actually put into the question. and during the exam an announcement was put out that we should just look it up but a lot of students including me didn't see that until after the exam so we literally just spent a lot of time trying to answer a question without all of the information again like another example is like right now um grades for all other classes for me at least have been in and for a lot of classes and i think the grading deadline was like three days ago but apparently no one in our class has gotten our grade yet still so just stuff like that. There are a few things in this class that felt like they were like poorly executed, but overall it was like a pretty good class. If I had to give like an arbitrary number to it, I'd probably put like a seven out of 10. But now I'm gonna talk about my final thoughts with the class and tips to succeed. So overall, Kim 102 is a class that I learned to like. At the beginning, I just really wasn't feeling it, but over time, I started liking the class a lot more. It's definitely a special class in the fact that at least for me, the content seemed to get easier as the semester went on, as opposed to other classes where it, it kind of gets harder throughout the semester. I think the biggest tip that I would say for this class is to make sure that you make some type of mind map or something in that realm that works for you. Really understanding not only like what we're taught in lecture, but going and making external notes about what's going on around and making the connections in this class is a big deal because the content of the class is really connected through very small channels. So if you can figure out what those channels are, any question that's asked, whether you really know exactly what to do or not, you should be able to find a way to make it work. But basically that's all I have for today. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully you can do well in Kim 102. Peace.